Nobody likes to talk about it, and we all struggle with it as women. The issue of body image and self-confidence. Tackling that beast can be one of the hardest things to do. I could sit here and tell you the truth about your body. It's beautiful, holy, lovely. You've heard it all before, and you probably won't believe me. Because we've all been hurt. The wounds can be so deep. Your scars are there to prove it. We've been battling this idea of self-image and body image and self-confidence for ever since we were, what, 10 years old, maybe younger? Maybe it's something that your dad said or didn't say. Maybe it was a boyfriend who criticized you. Maybe it was a group of girls that made fun of you. Maybe it was your mom who had standards of perfection that you just couldn't reach. We all have wounds. That pain is very real. And for some, of, some people, it's led to even more pain with eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia, and for some, even cutting. A physical pain revealed, revealing an inner pain, which can be so hard. You are not alone. Making the decision today to face that pain and to own it and to heal it and to put us all on the path to making the decision to fight this beast together. We acknowledge these wounds. We know they won't heal overnight, but I'm declaring an outright attack on the beast because we have to build up what's been torn down, one another. Body image and self-worth. Women, we laugh at guys and we try to say they size each other up and compare and compete. Women are way worse. It's so hard. If you have curly hair, you want straight hair. If, you have, if you're tall, you want to be short. If you have blonde hair, you want, or if you have blue eyes, you want to have green eyes. And we have, they have contacts to take care of all that. I'd like to take a line from Sheryl Crow who says, it's not having what you want, it's wanting what you've got. My dad in high school, I would come home and I would be complaining about this or that. And he would say, Sarah, 10 things happened to you today. Nine of them were great, one of them not so great. And you dwell on that one thing all day long. And he's right, what about the other nine things? Let's apply that to the beast. Let's apply that to body image. Yeah, sure, everybody has things that they don't like about their body, but does that trump all the other great things about you, the nine other great things? Your bodies house the crown of creation, your beautiful feminine soul. The invisible is revealed in the visible. Your body is the window to your soul. How awesome is that? Your decision to look at those nine great things every day and say, you know what, I'm not gonna let the one or two get to me. But to look at those nine things and say, God gave me one life. He gave me one life and he gave me this one body for a reason. And I'm going to cherish that body and I'm going to love that body and I'm going to believe in myself because I want you to believe me when I say to you that you're enough. You're enough, you're enough, you're enough just the way that you are. God loves you just the way you are. The people in your life love you just the way you are. And I want you to love yourself. And whenever you get that worry and anxiety and that pressure to be perfect, I want you to take the advice that a priest gave me on a retreat, some of the best advice I've ever received. He looked me straight in the eye and he said, Sarah, I want you to run. I want you to run towards Christ and not look in any other direction. And when you feel whole and strong, and when you've been healing and striving for virtue, I want you to glance to the side and see who's running next to you, and that's who you're supposed to be with. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are loved. Believe that you're beautiful, let it shine, and keep running.